Hey y'all, today we're going to do things a little bit different. I've been noticing in the comments that a lot of you are in the planning and dreaming stages of owning a boat. And I remember those days all too well. They were only a year ago. <laughs> One thing I know I questioned all the time was what in the world do I need in my boat galley and how is that different than what I had in my land kitchen? Now, let me stop right here right now. I might accidentally call the galley a kitchen a couple of times because my boat vernacular is not always 100% on. But anyways, I wanted to go through the top 10 things that I have in my galley that I feel like are extremely helpful and a couple of other things that I feel like will really help you out along the way. So let's go ahead and get into this version of My Favorite Things Galley Edition. <laughs> Item number one on my list, and this was number one on my list in my land kitchen as well, is my Blendtec blender. It is a commercial grade blender, which means it has a ton of power. We're not talking about your regular everyday blender. It has a very prominent spot up here in the galley and it never moves because I use it several times a day, every single day. I use it for everything from smoothies and milkshakes and soup to chopping my chicken. Also, little fun fact, it is the same blender that they use at Chat and Chill to make delicious frosty drinks. It blends everything up so perfectly. They are nice and smooth for your pina coladas, margaritas, daiquiris, whatever frozen beverage you might have in mind. Moving on to item number two, which is the Instant Pot. Instant Pot. I always want to call it an Instant Pot and it's not Instant Pot. This is something that I did not have in my land kitchen and I heard a ton of boaters just talk about it at all points in time saying how much they loved it, how it was a lifesaver. And so we went ahead and got one and I didn't use it for the first like eight months on the boat. Not until some point in the Bahamas, it started getting really, really hot. And I was like, maybe I should start using that. And the reason I say that is because when you're using the propane stove, it gets so hot so quickly. Not only are you standing over an open flame, but you can't have air flow on you because it'll blow the flame out. So you're standing in a hot room with open flame coming up at you with absolutely no airflow, and it gets really uncomfortable really fast. If you cook all of that stuff in your Instant Pot, then you save yourself a lot of extra heat. And I know this is kind of gross, but for those of you that are a bit of uh, germaphobes out there, this is going to be really important. Flies. Flies can smell your food from miles, miles away, and they will come from wherever they are to enjoy your food. If you're cooking something like really flavorful or has a good scent, like a curry, let's say, on your stovetop, flies are going to come from where they are into your boat. And let's say you have the doors open because it's hot, because you're cooking over an open flame, well, they're gonna get inside and you're gonna be battling them while you're trying to cook your dinner. So do yourself a favor and use the Instapot to cook stuff like that. And then you can have the doors closed, it won't get too hot, and you can keep all of those smells to yourself and away from gross little flies. It does also save a ton of time. I love to cook, so the time piece isn't like a huge thing for me, but I will say you are definitely able to multitask with it. And so there's another perk. I don't think I can go on and on about it anymore. Let's just move on to item number three, which is the bread maker. This is another item that we did not have in our land kitchen and is absolutely essential in our galley. Bread from the store is going to mold quickly, very, very fast on your boat. And you can try and save it by putting it in the fridge, but a lot of time your fridge is totally packed and you don't have room for a nice big fluffy loaf of bread. I probably make a loaf about once a week and there is absolutely nothing better than pulling out a fresh loaf of bread that's all nice and warm cutting off a little piece, dipping it in some olive oil. No matter what time of day it is, Charles and I will take a fresh bread break. We also use it to make our pizza dough. We use it to make dough for bagels. We use it to make dough for pretzels. And it's pretty compact, so it's a wonderful addition to your galley. And I should mention, these aren't in any particular order. I don't think I could order these. Um, I just kind of like grouped them. So those were my top electronics. 
but I didn't want to make every item an electronic because there's so much that goes into having a well-rounded galley. Let's move on to space saving and storage because that is also incredibly critical when you are planning your galley. Item number four, which is these incredible airtight OXO containers. They are ooh, really durable and they have this little pop top lid that creates an airtight seal to whatever is inside, which is gonna be incredibly important for basically everything that you have on your boat. The food that you have on board is a limited and precious commodity, so you wanna make sure that whatever you have stays nice and fresh and absolutely bug free. <laughs> All right, item number five is these Tupperware containers. Now, if your Tupperware drawer is anything like mine was in our house, you are always rooting through it for the perfect container with the perfect matching lid. And you're always wondering where in the world the appropriate lid is and how in the world do they go missing? And finally, after searching around for several minutes, you just determined that the lid must be somewhere with all the rest of your missing socks. So, never thought I would get this fired up about Tupperware, but that's because I think I finally found the best solution out there, which is these silicone Tupperware containers. I love these for so many reasons. Number one being that when there's nothing in them, they are undeniably compact. So that is selling point number one. Selling point number two is that there's no lid. You never have to worry about finding the correct lid. They zip closed and no matter what you put in them, it is not coming out a promise. No spills, even if it's liquid. And the best part is that when you load them up, you can remove all of the extra air. So no dead space in these when you put them in the fridge. And since fridge space is such a commodity, you don't want like a whole big container with a whole bunch of empty air taking up a whole bunch of room in your fridge. You wanna be able to make things as compact as possible so that you can squeeze them into whatever little nook or cranny you have available in that fridge. Basically, they're just incredible and I'm gonna stop talking about Tupperware right now, but whether you live on a boat or in a land house, I just recommend these. I think they're incredible. Moving on. That is the first time I have had to remove this since I put them in a year ago. So they have some staying power. This is a little bamboo divider that I have put in our drawers to help make the galley drawers just a little more efficient. I don't like to root around in a big clunky drawer where everything is just kind of thrown in there. So I highly recommend these for the galley or any drawer you have on the boat where you might want to keep things separate and organized. All right, that's it for storage. Now let's just move into some basics, some real essentials. Item number seven is Yeti drinkware. I'm sure everybody knows what a Yeti is by now, but if you don't, in essence, they keep cold things cold and hot things hot for an insanely long period of time. So that's why we have Yetis for literally everything we drink on the boat. This one for our protein shake and milkshakes, this one for coffee, and this one for wine and cocktails. One thing I will say about Yeti is that sometimes they sell them without a lid, not necessarily for the water bottle because that will come with a lid, but for the other versions, they sell the cup and the lid separately, and I will say go ahead and splurge and make sure you buy the lid, mainly because it really does help extend how long something is gonna stay hot or cold, and also because you live on a boat. Things are gonna spill, and it gets messy really quickly. And if you're in the dinghy and bouncing around, it just makes it nice to keep everything that you're drinking inside your cup. Moving on to thing number eight, Speaking of your Yetis, let's talk about what you're gonna put in them. It becomes incredibly cumbersome to be buying your favorite canned drinks. I myself am obsessed with LaCroix. I'll drink it several times a day if I have the option. But when you're somewhere like the Bahamas and you have to carry your groceries for miles back to the boat, the last thing you wanna do is weigh yourself down with 12 packs of LaCroix or Coke or whatever your flavor is. So that's why I highly recommend that you get a soda stream. You can make as much carbonated water as you want, and then there's a whole bunch of different syrups that you can add in. I have a ton of flavors for lemon water, lime water, whatever kind of water I'm craving. I know they have colas and sprites and all sorts of things as well. It just makes it nice to be able to have your favorite beverage without having to break your back to get it back to the boat. 
and not to mention some of those stores might not have what you're looking for anyway. So it's best to just plan to have whatever it is that you like to drink on your boat. You will need to make sure that you have plenty of canisters of CO2 with you. Each one of these canisters makes up to 60 liters of bubbly water. I would just figure out how long you're gonna be gone, how many beverages you typically drink in a day, and then do the math backwards from there to see how many that you're gonna need on board because you don't wanna run out. I really like to use this company, SodaSense, to get our replacement canisters because they allow you to mail in your empty canisters and they mail you back full ones and they don't care what brand your canisters are. So I highly recommend checking them out to keep the clutter down. Moving on to item number nine, which are my knives. I have seen a lot of people keep a knife block out on their boat and that just wasn't an option for us because on one of the charters we took, a rogue wave hit the boat and sent the knives flying everywhere. They bounced right out of that knife block and flew all over the galley, which was kind of terrifying and made it so that knife blocks were not gonna be on our boat. I've also seen those big magnetic strips posted and while I think that that is probably perfectly safe, it just freaks me out. So I went with these Cuisinart knives because they have this nice sheath that always keeps your blade tucked away no matter what. And that way when you're reaching in your drawer, nothing is gonna kind of come out and surprise you. So I really like them for that purpose. But I also really like them for this non-stick coating that they have on them for two reasons. Number one, it makes chopping really easy and smooth. Number two, it protects the stainless steel blade from any sort of rust. I've had these for a year on the boat and no rust problems so far. I purchased the whole set and I will say while I use them all, these are by far my two favorites, the chef's knife and the bread knife, of course. Thing number 10 on our list is our UV water filter. Whether you're making your water from a water maker or you're getting it from a marina, you wanna make sure that your drinking water is as clean as it possibly can be. And that's why we have this UV filter. It uses a charcoal filter to get any sort of extra particulates out of the water, any detergents, any pesticides, any heavy metals like lead, yikes, out of your water. And the filter is good for 500 gallons, so that's a lot of drinking water and it doesn't need to be replaced all that often. And finally, the best thing about it is by having one of these on board, no more plastic water bottle waste. Bonus. All right, that wraps up uh, this version of My Favorite Things Galley Edition with just a couple of extra last minute thoughts. I honestly had a really hard time narrowing it down to 10, mainly because I use every single thing that I have in my galley. There's just not enough space to have something on the boat that you're not gonna use all the time. I do genuinely think that whatever you have in your land kitchen is probably gonna work for your boat galley. Just stay away from anything that's glass that can break really easily or some sort of like porcelain plates. Go ahead and switch those to something melamine. They're much more durable and they have a lot of really cute patterns at this point, so they can still look nice. If you are gonna buy new items, just remember that things that are collapsible are gonna save you a lot of space or things that are stackable inside of each other are also really, really helpful. My cutting board is a great example of that. I didn't talk about it, but I do love it. It has multiple surfaces that you can use for when you're cooking without having to have multiple cutting boards. And it fits directly on top of the stove top, so that way when you really need just a little bit of extra counter space, you've got it. And finally, if you're gonna buy an electronic, think about the size of it. When we first ordered the Instapot, we got a six quart pot and it was huge. It took up so much space in our little galley. So we went ahead and traded it in for the three quart pot, which is the perfect size for the two of us. And one last thought is the draw of your electrics. There were a couple of times that I had to turn the generator on in order to use some of these electronics, which is definitely not ideal. So think about how much power you have available on your boat. And that's it guys. I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, let me know in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please subscribe so you can follow along with all of our adventures. We will be back next week. See you guys soon. Bye.